So, so I'm using a, uh, a uh, iPad mini here uh, for this demonstration, and it's a long ways from those uh, Texas, Texas instrument things with the couplers. A few of you in the room remember those, right? Uh, but anyways, uh, my board introduced uh, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, a product called MyWare Mobile. And what MyWare Mobile is, is it's a, an app that uh, the consumer can use or the agent can use. From the consumer's perspective, it's very similar to MyWare.com. It's uh, active pending listings uh, and, and a, kind of a subset of the information. It's not everything, but it's a good share of the information that's available. Uh, from the realtor's perspective, uh, it, it, you can log into it and you can literally see just about everything about the listing uh, and search on most data elements. Uh, when something that's, that this is our number one phone call, and that's why I deleted the app and reloaded it just before the meeting started, because this is the first screen that comes up. Uh, but note this toggle at the bottom, it says agent login and consumer login. Uh, you want to be on the agent login when you log in. That's really important. Uh, the, cons the consumers don't have to log in. They can say no thank you and not, and not put in an email address and, and a, or a login identity basically. It doesn't have to be an email address. It literally could be anything. Uh, but the advantage with them logging in is that the system and on the server will save their favorites and will save searches for them that they like to run. Uh, so no need to log in. Uh, but again, if they want to be able to use some of the safe features, they do need to log in. Uh, when the agent logs in, uh, they use their, just their MyWare membership number. And their password. Brings up a, a nice little flash screen. Uh, and basically, uh, at the moment, it defaults to just south of downtown. Uh, the next version of it actually will use your office latitude and longitude and will default to where you're officed. So that, that, that's something that's coming up in a future search. But basically, it's just kind of a, a map-based uh, utility uh, that you can draw and find listings. So let's say that uh, I really have a, a hankering for airplanes and uh, I'd like to live uh, up here so I can watch the, the planes uh, Land by, land by the airport. I can just simply touch you know, that, that search button and find properties that are in any, any area that I really pretty much choose. So that's kind of by default. In addition, over here on the right, and I'm going to, turn, I'm going to push this clear button in the upper left hand corner. So go up top there, it's kind of hard to see, but it says address, city, subdivision, zip code, area, or L number. So in the upper right hand corner in that black box, a little faint right now, but in that box you can type any address or street name or subdivision name. You could type 4904 for Lawrence Township. Now if you type this 4904 in there, what that means is you're going to find anything that has an address of 4904 or is in 4904. But if you recall, when you use the township table in the system, there's three components of it. There's the, the 49, which is the county, and there's the 04, which is the township. So you could actually type 4904 Marion and it would actually give you just Lawrence Township. So that's kind of a, a tip more than anything else. Or you could type, you know, 4904 uh, Lawrence, and you'd find, you know, Lawrence Township, basically. So that's something you can type in that window. So address, city, subdivision, zip, uh, area, or you can type a listing number up there. If you just touch on that box, which I just did, it brings up a variety of search filters. Uh, so up here we have, uh, it starts off at any price, any status, any contingency. So let's say that I want to, I want to find properties that uh, are in uh, 4904. So I'm going to type that in my, in my search filter up here at the top. And for the any price, I'm going to slide it up to, uh, we'll say, uh, 175000 to 200000 I'm going to touch on save and click search. So now it's finding properties basically uh, any status uh, that are in that price range in 4904. Uh, the blues are houses that are active. The green are houses that are active that have an upcoming open house. And the reds are off market. Uh, if I touch on any one of these flags, uh, it'll give me uh, some quick details about the company and the address of the property. And, and that, that property is always the one in the lower right-hand corner here. So if I touch in the lower right-hand corner, it brings up the details. And you'll see as I slide up these details, this is a pending listing, 
uh, we have all kinds of information. And if we, if we rotate, let's see if it will do this with this cable. Yeah, that can't be, there we are. So if we rotate it, you can get a little, a little harder to get the cable, but you can get a little longer display of the information. But basically, uh, pretty much everything is there. This is a pending listing, so at the bottom we have off-market information. Uh, in this box in through here, uh, it has uh, all the contact phone numbers, whether it's direct soliciting or show on public internet, that sort of a thing. Now keep in mind that the consumer won't see a lot of these fields. That when you're not logged in, you don't see uh, the commission, for example, or you don't see the fact that it's uh, direct soliciting, yes, that sort of a thing. Uh, but again, it, they basically see pretty much what's on myboard.com. What's been added from what's on myboard.com are room dimensions on, on the public side of it. So there's a little bit more information on the public side of it. But over here on the left now, uh, you know, we can slide up and down and, and view the photos uh, for that property. And again, uh, we can just kind of you know, walk through. If we touch the arrow over here on the right, we can walk through those properties. Uh, left to right or, or right to left. So a pretty good tool for searching and finding, but also really important is the map location. And, and over the last couple of years, our, map, our mapping on the system by default has improved dramatically. Most common reason for a property not to map correctly though is something wrong with the address, especially if the zip code is wrong. So again, uh, you should always check your listings after entry. Uh, I mean, if an office administrator is loading listings for you, the map pops up and they can see where it's at, but They've never been to the property. Uh, so, you know, ultimately, you always want to verify that it's been mapped correctly so it shows up correctly here. Uh, just, just real important. Uh, now, a couple other powerful things about the product. You'll note if I'm over here on the left-hand side, uh, we've got some, a variety of things here, but note that we've got my contacts. The my contacts are your prospects from the system. So it, it pulls them in, it's a direct query of, of your online prospects that are in Tempo or in Fusion. And Tempo and Fusion use the same database. Uh, keep in mind that Tempo and Fusion have an import that you can import your entire you know, Outlook uh, file directly into Tempo uh, with a couple of clicks. It's pretty easily done. Uh, so if, if you don't have all of your contacts in Tempo, uh, you know, it's a good way to do it. Uh, so that so this is actually a search of my contacts. So I, I type uh, hit hit the contacts. You know if I type in uh, you know my last name, you know I come up with my wife and my relatives and everything associated with Renkert. Uh, so again, it, it's a direct query of what's in, in the contacts in Tempo. Additionally, uh, the agent directory. Uh, if if you go here, uh, this is a, a live you know live. So if I type Lewis. Up, scroll down, uh, Bob Lewis. And again, the photos that appear here are the photos that are in tempo under your preferences. Uh, also under there, note the share app option. And what the share app option is, it's the ability for you to share it with your consumers. Uh, you can either email it, tweet it out, place it on your Facebook site, and when you send it out, what happens is, let's say that I say, 